Hey, what's up? It's your girl, Neek, and you're tuned in to Neek at Night. And tonight we're going to be talking about Lee Merritt and a lot of the stuff that is going on surrounding him. Lee Merritt has become a person who has positioned himself to become the Gloria Allred of police justice. Where there is police justice, here is Lee Merritt to raise, wave the race flag and get everybody in a bunch. I myself, when I see Lee Merritt, I see somebody who I myself personally, I can't speak it as a fact. This is just my opinion as I see it. I see him as a person whose intentions are not are not pure or genuine and I feel like he uses race baiting to get everybody in a frenzy and because people think with their emotions and they disregard critical thinking skills he gets to be able to carry this on and get people riled up and then he gets to cash in on the end game which seems to be about money and not justice and that begs me to question is his motives about greed or is his motives about justice? Now, I told you guys I would no longer talk about police brutality. I would no longer talk about race issues and things like that. Because when you do talk about things and you don't follow the quote unquote code because you have critical thinking skills and you can think outside the box and you can think for yourself as an individual and not a sheep like mind. Um, you know, there's a lot of blowback and with that blowback, there comes a lot, a lot, a lot of disrespect and it makes you not want to advocate for the people who have this mentality to disrespect somebody who thinks different from them, especially when that person is only trying to let people have an open mind and, and start to use critical thinking and logic in certain situations and not just go off of race, 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 and treat every situation the same. Every single situation is not the same. Each situation has a uniqueness about it and things are different and there are different things that need to be considered on a case by case basis. Now, Lee Merritt has first we well, my first time seeing him was representing both um both them John's family and then he hopped and he started to represent Joshua Brown. When he represented Joshua Brown, he gave a lot of misleading information and it made people all kind of different type of ways because he was trying to set out a certain agenda. First, he came out and he said, you know, Joshua Brown had no known enemies. He didn't have any enemies. And he said that he was shot in the chest and the mouth. And then it was revealed that he was actually shot two times in the abdomen and he was not shot in the chest or the mouth. Then he came forward to talk about how he was scared for his life. And then now all of a sudden he came out and he said that, you know, he didn't want to testify. And then he used Nicki Minaj as a ploy. I felt like to get clout, I don't even care for Nicki Minaj like that. Y'all know that I don't. But right is right. And I give credit when it's due. It felt like he was clout chasing in that situation. And it made me look at him a certain type of way because I felt like his intentions were about getting people riled up, race baiting certain topics to underline his pockets and the end goal be the bag. And it just didn't really seem genuine to me. Now, when it comes to a Tatiana Jefferson, he immediately started to represent the family. And when they came forward um, or when I first heard anyone speak out from the family, it was her father. Her father spoke out and he said, listen, I have an insurance policy on her. I don't need no donations. There was a GoFundMe page set up. I do not authorize it. That is what this insurance policy is for. And that is what the insurance policy will be used for. Well, Lee Merritt then came out and represented the other side of the family who wanted to disregard the father. They wanted to keep the GoFundMe open. They wanted it to flourish from 10000 and it grew all the way up to $250,000. And they wanted to keep that money coming in. And it makes you wonder, what is the goal? Like, do we want justice here or do we want money? Is her life worth a dollar amount? Or should it be a bigger, you know, purpose than that? Especially if the funeral costs are covered, like what exactly are the monies being used for, et cetera, et cetera. So for those of you who have not been caught up to speed on what's going on, I'm going to show you an interview that the father did a day after she passed away and said 
that he was going to take care of it and it was what it was. And then I'm going to show you what is now transpiring now. So here is the father's first original interview. And this is what he said. This is a Tatiana Jefferson talking about what she loved most, medicine. Tonight, her father describes his daughter's death in one word, senseless. He talked only to CBS 11's Aaron Jones about what he wants to see changed in the Fort Worth Police Department immediately. Her mother called me uh, yesterday morning. She said Tay was shot. Marquise Jefferson waking up to learn his only daughter was dead. I mean, it's senseless. My daughter was 28 years old, had a whole life in front of her. And I don't have nothing against the neighbor. I mean, hey, if he sees something going over that house with my daughter, you need to uh, call the police. You know what I'm saying? But it's the way the police acted. It didn't have to be like that. Jefferson thankful for their final words. I texted her, said I love her. And she texted me back, said I love you too. The two shared a very special bond. When she was growing up, I read to her a lot. I, I bought a lot of books. Oh, she loved to read. She reads all the time. Her mother tell me she in there reading, 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 reading. I like this Bolton, John, G. Uh, I don't want no hug. That's my one and only daughter. I'll never forget that. And Jefferson's father did bring up a donation page that was set up for his daughter. He says he was not made aware about this or even contacted about this and that he will be paying for his daughter's funeral with his own money. Okay, so since the father has stated that he does not need that GoFundMe account, he does not need that GoFundMe money, he has an insurance policy and he will pay for it, Lee Merritt decided to get an aunt of uh, a Tatiana to discredit him and defame his name so that they can keep the money rolling in for the GoFundMe account. So here is a post made by Tariq Nasheed. I'm going to read it to you and then I'm going to play the video of the aunt speaking about a Tatiana's father. Okay, so this is the post that Tariq put up and it says, a Tatiana Jefferson's father, Marquise Jefferson, has let it be known that he is not for all the hugging and forgiven over his daughter's death. So lawyer Lee Merritt has instructed the rest of the family to distance themselves from the father so it doesn't mess up the bag. So this is the video that is included in this post. Hello, everyone. My name is Benita Body. I am Tatiana's aunt and Yolanda Carr's, Tay's mother, oldest sister. I'm speaking on her behalf today because she could not be here. As you have heard, her health is declining. And I've heard of the allegations of Mr. Marquise Jefferson, is what I want to address, claiming to be her biological father which he is not, nor has he ever had legal custody of her. We have not as a family heard from Mr. Jefferson, and if he cares to reach out to us, we would be more than happy to address his concerns. And I want you to know that the GoFundMe page that is family approved to Tay's legal family. And I thank everyone for their outreach, for their giving, and for the love that they have. Okay, so as you can see, they're saying, listen, you know, the GoFundMe is family approved and we welcome and we thank you for your donations, et cetera, et cetera. Well, the father was not having it. He decided to go to a judge and get a restraining order against them to stop their actions and so that he can take action and have his funeral for his daughter have left him out of the planning he says from other family members and their legal representatives have left him out of the planning he says red flags also went up when he discovered a gofundme account in his daughter's name that gofundme went from ten thousand to fifty thousand to seventy five thousand bruce carter is a spokesman for mr jefferson he says the grieving father went to the courts on friday asking for a temporary restraining order 
giving him control of his daughter's remains, her funeral, and burial. A Dallas County judge signed that order late Friday afternoon. Jefferson held a press conference announcing he's not authorizing the funeral of the family members planned Saturday at the Potter's House, Dallas. He's holding his own service next week. When you raise money for a specific purpose, and that money is not needed, I believe that you're defrauding the people who are weakened at heart that wants to do something. Jefferson claims he told Tatiana's relatives money wasn't needed for the funeral because he had an insurance policy to cover that. David Hen Jefferson claims he told Tatiana's relatives money wasn't needed for the funeral because he had an insurance policy to cover that. David Henderson is a civil rights attorney working with the other side of the family. He says Saturday's memorial service for Johnson will continue as planned, though her remains will not be present. Okay, and as you can see, the GoFundMe account has raised upwards of $245,000 plus. And if you look closely, it says that this is organized by Lee Merritt. So this GoFundMe account, they're saying it's family approved, but you see the organizer is Lee Merritt. And it makes you question what the actual true motive of this is. If the father has an insurance policy that's going to take care of the funeral service, then what is the intentions of said GoFundMe account? And what is the intentions to distance the father and try to denounce him as the father? He is listed on her birth certificate. He signed her birth certificate. She also carries his last name and the insurance policy that he has for a Tatiana was placed over 20 years ago on her behalf. And that is what parents should be doing. That's what my mom did when I was a baby. She put an insurance policy out on me. And as an adult, she has paid on it and paid on it and paid on it. And she still pays on it because a GoFundMe account should not be used in place of an insurance policy. You get an insurance policy to prevent having to ask people to bury your loved one and you prevent that people needing to go out and do car washes and do all of these other things you get an insurance policy so that you are prepared in the event of a tragedy you don't want a tragedy to happen but if one happens you are prepared and you are ready to take care of the financial part of it because the grieving process is one that is going to take a lot more to deal with into grabs Okay, so after all of this, Tatiana's father decided to hold a press conference to talk about this situation and give his side of the story. And whether he is her biological father or not, he is her legal father. And I think there are enough of us who watch paternity court to know the difference. Whether you are, you know, a biological father, if you sign that birth certificate, you have a legal obligation to take care of that child, which it appears that he has done, whether or not he's biological or not. She looks exactly like the man. When I seen him first do an interview, I'm like, wow, she looks exactly like him. But hey, whether it's biological or whatever, he did a press conference. He is her legal father. And he talked about this particular aunt who wanted to talk against him. And he said a few words. Well, the representative on his behalf said a few words about her and then he answered some other things so I'm going to add a couple excerpts from the press conference and that'll be that on that. Held a news conference Monday I know one of them um, made some comments saying that Mr. Jefferson is not the biological father and is that never had legal custody obviously there's a birth certificate saying otherwise in this document just what what is your relationship, your custody, you had custody of her, um, her entire job. I'll answer that question for you. So since day one, he's been our father. He's her father. You had one aunt that made that claim. The sister didn't make that claim. The brothers didn't make that claim. It was a disgruntled aunt that he's never had a relationship with that he's had to take action to. Um, this same aunt, since we're being transparent, falsely filed a Tatiana on her income tax return, the mother made her legally pay that money back. There was many other altercations with this aunt. So he understands that aunt, and that's what she's done for a very long time. But as I said, Ms. Carr never had a problem. Neither sibling has never come out against him. And that's why I said what they are going through now is probably one of the worst things outside what he's going through.
Basically, they said it doesn't matter. We don't need him. Thank God for the courts. Thank God for his persistence. And I want to say thank God for the people that have prayed for these clergy that met at the first press conference, for the news media that came out to tell their story on a consistent basis. It's too difficult to take away, especially when a black man does the right thing. He took a policy out 20 years ago and paid that policy diligently for his daughter. And as Arnie would have it, they met in June about the same policy. So as we're all saddened to be here tonight, it was of necessity. And he will continue to fight for the name of his daughter, as he said, as long as he has breath in him. Once again, the funeral will take place on Thursday at Friendship West at noon, and the wake will be on next Wednesday at Golden Gate from 8.30 to 9.30. What I would ask that you do from the public is you keep the Jeffersons and the Cars and the family of Atatiana Jefferson in your prayers. You find words to comfort them because tonight no one wins. No one wins. Um, I am Bruce Carter, the director of Value of a Life and also the spokesperson for the Jefferson family. We're here tonight. Um, we never wanted to be here, but for the last seven days since the death of Atatiana Jefferson, her father, Mr. Jefferson, has done everything he could to participate in the home going of his daughter. Um, Unfortunately, this all went south when a GoFundMe uh, page was discovered. And Mr. Jefferson sent out an email asking Lee Merritt, the attorney, to please not raise funds for my daughter because I have that covered. Instead of honoring the wish of a father, they went to the attack against Mr. Jefferson and blatantly disregarded who he was, that he didn't exist. Let me explain who Mr. Jefferson is. He's a 19-year employee at El Centro, where he works in the computer lab. He volunteers his time every Tuesday and Thursday at the Holland Hills Recreation Center teaching kids math. He also goes out and takes care of the homeless by, by providing cots. He believes that he was put on this earth to be a servant. Now, let me tell you about his relationship with his daughter. Being her primary caregiver at the age of three months to one year old, not understanding what it meant to be a dad, but he figured it out. He gained the support of his brother and his wife as they progressed through life. When she was diagnosed with diabetes in her teenage years, he took the medicine to the school. He took the dietary food. When she got ready to go to college, he has a home in New Orleans. She went to Xavier, New Orleans. When it was time to go to college, she let her dad know and her stepmom know, y'all need to have me in New Orleans in three days, and they did that. During her tenure in New Orleans, her and her stepmother, Miss Jefferson, remained very close. And even as of June, when they had a problem, she was with her dad so they could rectify the problem. So we're here for many points, but the most important is to announce that her home going, her celebration as it should be, will not take place tomorrow. It has been moved until Thursday at Friendship West. That will take place at noon on Thursday. There will be a wake at Golden Gate Funeral Home where the public is invited to come out and view the body from 8.30 to 9.30. What we will do to honor a Tatiana is, we will allow her name to live on through a foundation called the Tatiana Tate Jefferson Foundation, whose mission is to help young black people become doctors, to address homelessness and to reduce stress in poverty-stricken communities. That foundation is in place. Mr. Jefferson has pledged to continue his work 
in his daughter's name. He only had one daughter. Now, what we're going to do so families are not broken up and discarded in the time of, of hurt, I had the privilege of meeting Tatiana's brother and sister. It's devastating not to have a funeral tomorrow. Devastating. It's not their fault. But I also have heard from the elitist in Dallas that believes they can call a judge tonight and it'll be overturned. If that corruption is to take place, I would ask that the FBI investigate that judge immediately. But it has been said, I know people, I will call people. He had to go to court to get a restraining order in order to do what parents do. Now, Dallas should not be able to disrupt the courts. Another thing we would love to see is the Jefferson Law that does not allow death chasers, attorneys, to engage with families before a loved one is dead. That is part of the problem in this case. Money has been flashed and promised, and it has allowed people to not make great decisions. These are the things we cannot do because death is final. And in this case, I applaud Mr. Jefferson from fighting every since Sunday morning, begging and pleading. Up until yesterday at 6 o'clock, we could not get his name put on the obituary. We could not have a place for him and his family to come. Basically, they said it doesn't matter. We don't need him. Thank God for the courts. Thank God for his persistence. And I want to say thank God for the people that have prayed for these clergy that met at the first press conference, for the news media that came out to tell his story on a consistent basis. It's too difficult to take away, especially when a black man does the right thing. He took a policy out 20 years ago and paid that policy diligently for his daughter. And as Arnie would have it, they met in June about the same policy. So as we're all saddened to be here tonight, it was of necessity. Um, I have heard that they will have a memorial um, regardless. And unfortunately, here's what I, I realized. This became a puppeteering effort to celebrate different platforms. A talk to you only got lost in the place. Speakers want to speak, speak about what? You want to do services for what? This should be about a young lady who was fighting to do something great, and that was to become a doctor. So we will have a service that honors her. We will invite individuals from all faiths, all races, to come in and do what we can beyond the funeral. What's next? We cannot continually raise sand when someone dies and we do nothing in between the deaths. So that's what he wants to take place. And with these pastors and with the Seven Day Adventists and other, um, the nation has reached out and said they would love to be a part. The United Methodist Church has said they would love to be a part. And I believe that that's what this death should be about. How we come together to make our community safer so they don't have to have the negative comment the commentary. Okay, so as you see that, you know, they want people to come together. But Mr. Lee Merritt, he wants everything to be a race bait and, you know, raise the tensions and get people riled up. And it is what it is. I'm going to play a little bit more of this press conference and then that'll be that on that. But before I play a little bit more, I want to know what you think about it. When you see Lee Merritt going and he's representing the Botham John family, he's representing um, Joshua Brown, and you see how things were twisted one way and then another way with Joshua Brown's narrative, how, you know, first he didn't have enemies, then he was scared of his life, and then he was worried about, you know, if he testified, and then how it kept changing. But every time he changed the narrative, it was to insist cite this racial divide on purpose and he only at, he omitted certain details that did not fit his narrative at that time and then when he wanted to shape a new narrative he then put in different details which to me I looked at it with a side eye I raised my eyebrow and I let you guys know how I felt a little bit funny about it and it is what it is. So I want to know, when you see Lee Mary, do you see somebody who is fighting for justice because it's needed? Or do you think 
that he is somebody who is an agent sent in to raise his bottom dollar and create chaos in the midst of it. I don't know. You guys let me know, but I'm going to play a little bit more of this press conference right now. And if there is anybody who is disrespectful in my comments, I mean, I've already blocked a lot of you and I don't plan to continue these kinds of conversations because a lot of you are very disrespectful. And a lot of people lack critical thinking skills and they don't know how to look at things with an open mind. So I myself, I refuse to advocate or even bring awareness to these types of conversations because I feel like it's a waste of my time. But for the last time before I bow all the way out, I want since Lee Merritt is going to be the one to be taking on these cases and representing the black people and you guys are looking for a savior, I want you guys to to understand what you are following and at least have an open mind going forward when these types of topics come up and realize whether it's Lee Merritt or anybody else, realize if these intentions are genuine or not, okay? And with that being said, I'm going to play a little bit more of the um, press conference and that'll be that on that and I'll let y'all handle y'all black issues, but just know that y'all need to have an open mind because every situation is a case by case situation and y'all handle it going forward. What we have is this. We have a GoFundMe that started off at $10,000 to pay for funeral arrangements. He stated at that time, I have this covered. That GoFundMe went from 10,000 to 50,000 to 75,000 to 100,000 to 150,000 to 200,000 and it was a little over 238,000. Now that's outside of the GoFundMe. I'm going to get there. The GoFundMe. So when you raise money for a specific purpose, and that money is not needed, I believe that you're defrauding the people who are weakened at heart that wants to do something. So the very moment that the email was sent to Lee Merritt that said, stop it, she doesn't need it, it should have been stopped. But it wasn't. And so the problem is you create money and family is now looking at money instead of purpose. Yes, I do want to thank these athletes that have already wrote checks directly to the funeral. The funeral is paid for. So his policy will go into the foundation to serve the people. So having already paid is Harrison Barnes and Malik Jackson. So the film is paid for, it will go on, but his work that he's had to do since he received a call from the mother, the mother called him and said, our daughter has been shot, then went on to say killed. So his relationship with the mother has always been great, remains great, and the mother has been very adamant that she had nothing to do with everything that has come against him. So when you have parents that are working for the purpose, we cannot let money, greed, or anything else disrupt that. That's why we're here. As I said, we've begged the entire week to just honor the simple things he asked for. And that just didn't happen, which led us to having to retain an attorney and to go to court and believe and hope that Justice would went out with all the, the work that he had done over the course of, our, of, his, of her life, and it did. And we thank the judge for standing up, knowing that there would be scrutiny um, in this case. But the judge was thorough and made sure that all the documents were in place. Yeah, legacy. What do you want folks to remember about your daughter? Um, mostly how she was a giving person, and that. She's just a loving person that she loves. They was love. And that smile, Lord have mercy. Came bright up there, brighten up any room. All right, guys, that's all for this video. That is all for my coverage on this. And I want to know what you guys think below. Be respectful because if you are disrespectful, because people seem to not understand the difference between a disagreement and disrespect, 
Um, I'll help you out with that and add you to the block party and just block you, period. And that's that on that. Um, again, I do not wish to cover these types of topics, but I just felt like it was very much needed for me to speak up on this. Lastly, because if Lee Merritt is going to be the represent representation of these black cases and it seems like there may be an underlining issue other than justice I want my followers at least to have an open mind when going forward in listening to such a person and following them as a leader in this freedom fight um, I want you to have an open mind with that and use discernment and, you know, just use your heart. I feel like every situation is a case by case situation. Botham's situation is not the same as a Tatiana situation. A Tatiana situation is not the same as Joshua's situation. Every situation is a case by case situation. And I feel like it should be addressed in that manner. It should be carried on in that manner. And it should be spoke about in the uniqueness of the particular situation. And in this situation, I feel like this situation and going forward to anything else that happens, use your mind, use your open heart and use your critical thinking skills in your logic a lot of people want everything to be race 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 let's you know uh, like you know and sometimes just take a step back use your critical thinking skills you look at the situation as a whole because you can then be manipulated by those very emotions there is 245 thousand plus dollars that was raised for a funeral when a father already had it covered and made it very clear on day two the day after she had passed and was murdered he made it very clear listen i don't want no hugs i don't want no money i got an insurance policy i will cover it but 245 thousand plus dollars because a lot of people act on emotion they don't you know and certain things drive them you know certain things can happen so you know, it is OK to care. I'm not saying do not care. I think that you should care and you should be empathetic to situations. But just kind of I don't know, just make different strides. I, I want to say I don't know how that's coming out. I'm not even about to edit this. This is off the top. But um, what I'm trying to say is just use critical thinking skills, use logic going forward and, you know, just not be driven by emotion all the time. It's very sad and unfortunate that a Tatiana has lost her life. There is no reason that cops should have murdered her, period, point blank. I made that clear in the video that I posted. Um, whether I thought it was race related or not, I feel like the police officer was very negligent and trigger happy and me saying hey I don't know if it's a black and white issue so much but it's definitely a negligent not trained properly issue and that is still holding him accountable I still held him accountable and I still hold him accountable today there's no reason a Tatiana should be dead no matter what it was a welfare check and it was improperly, improperly checked. There should have been a knock at the door. There should have been an announcement that police was present. There should have been a lot more measures taken before her life was taken. I stand on that. I stick on that. Whether I think that it was a oh because she was a black situation or not, I still feel as though there is no reason that her life should be taken period so again you come disrespectful in my comments i will just add you to the block party and it will be that on that and again i do not plan or you know i don't plan on continuing to cover these topics i want to leave that to the people who make everything a race issue that y'all eat it up it's certain channels devoted to manipulating black people's emotions y'all eat it up so I'm gonna let them manipulate you and do whatever because it seems like that is the cash cow now and I do not wish to manipulate my father my my father my followers I don't wish to manipulate my followers I want genuine support and I want genuine support based on what I think based on the work that I do and based on the person that I am and that's just that on that and if a person cannot respect me my thoughts my views my opinions then hey go to where you like it to be one-sided there are several youtubers who give you one-sided commentary they give you one-sided black pro-black commentary that only suits one narrative go over there that does not make me any less black i have been a black woman all my life i will continue to be a black woman until the day i die i consider myself a person who has been 
been adversely affected by racism. But I'm not going to sit here and make everything a race issue just because I've had a racist encounter before and because there are instances that happen. But I can step back and take a back seat on covering these issues and let you guys get fed with how you want to be fed and that's that on that and on that note i am out if you are not subscribed to my channel and you like my opinion then subscribe if you don't then hey by all means i'm not for you go to who is for you and go subscribe where you feel like you like to hear that point of view and that is that on that with that being said that's all for this video I just did a whole ramble. I'm not even going to edit it to make myself sound better or not. That is how I feel. That is what I said. I said what I said. And that's that on that. With that being said, I'm out. Goodbye. Use critical thinking skills going forward and not just act on emotion in every single situation. The father said he had it covered, but yet it is still going to be spun a certain type of way. And hey, have it at, have at it as you will. It is what it is. Thank you guys and good night. Peace.